can't help thinking about that family at home who are just hoping he's going to pull through this. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. That he could actually have other ticks on him. If that's the case, multiple ticks can cause big problems. It's really tough and just hoping that everything will be all right. He's got to be severely anemic as it is. Yeah. Uh, underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him. Number five. In terms of how he normally is, what change have you noticed? In the last hour and a half, I've just been going out and checking on him and he just stopped moving. Yeah. At the Bondi Clinic, Penny has arrived with the distressed Albert. A large tick was found on him yesterday afternoon, but today the pug has suddenly become lethargic. The moment any dog's rushed in with a tick, the first thing I, I really do is listen for their breathing, because the breathing tells you a lot. When that breathing's coming from a pug though, how do you know? Every pug sounds like it is suffering from severe tick paralysis. His heart sounds like a dog that's, that's stressed, really because of the fact that it's hot, plus he's, he's having this toxin flood around his body that does interfere with his breathing. It, it also affects how well his heart can pump. It's not good. Well, it's not great, no. Okay. No. And you've gone over him looking for another one? That was the original. Yeah. I think that there are a couple here. There, is that one? It's a, it's a nipple. <laughs> Sorry, Alps. He's got four of those on his side. <laughs> if they were ticks, we were all in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I've had people convinced that lumps, that cysts, that even pimples are ticks. Nipples, though, yeah, that's a first. This one, it's certainly been a paralysis tick because I can see that its mouth is actually still in there, that little spike. And that little reaction he's got around the area is, is his body trying to send antibodies out to, to try to get rid of the, the tick. Okay. Um, so that's obviously been a decent size one there. Penny's feeling guilty. She didn't bring Albert to Chris earlier. Yeah, I've been feeling really angry at myself all day, so I, I just hope he's all right. What I wouldn't mind doing now is actually putting him on the ground and seeing how he walks around, because the way the tick toxin works, it hits him in the back legs first, and then it starts to work its way up the body and affect the breathing. <laughs> Look, he looks okay, but what I wouldn't mind doing is actually keeping him in. Okay. And let's just watch him, let's let him cool down, let's let him rest and just see how he looks then. Because if he suddenly starts to worsen then he's, he could get bad quickly. Really quickly, yeah. because of the, of the pug things. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. He's a wonderful family pet. Hats. It's not going to be a good couple of hours and I'm just delighted that I brought him in when I did. at Bondi, Chris is still monitoring paralysis tick victim Albert. Well, she's pulled it out, she's left the mouthpiece in there. Okay. This little tick mouth tube, it seems so insignificant, but it's what sucks the blood out of Albert. It's also what injects the toxin into him. The worrying thing about what Penny's told me is that she's pulled this tick off Albie, but since then he's got worse. That makes me worried that he could actually have other ticks on him. If that's the case, multiple ticks can cause big problems. I reckon the easiest thing to do with him is just to spray him. Yeah, to be safe. Yeah. Are you enjoying this? The thing is that they can really lull you into a false sense of security. The tick toxin is still being absorbed into his body and it can get a lot worse over the next 24 hours for him. So I have to watch him. If he gets worse, he could get worse quickly and then he'll need the tick serum. Yeah, he's just getting tight. Think about it. You stay there. If he can support all his weight in his back legs, then he's doing all right. At Bondi, paralysis tick victim Albert has amazed Chris with his remarkable recovery. That core strength? Been working out. Hmm? The plan was for overnight observation, but in just five hours, the lucky pug has fought off all signs of the tick toxin. For Albert to come in with suspected serious tick paralysis and then walk out of here in the same day, that's quite an achievement. How long is it going to take? Should be very long. Penny and her two daughters, Stella and Pip, <laughs> are anxious to take their best mate home. Ellie! Ellie! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's looking good. Fantastic. 
Albert really shows you that every single tick case is so completely different and unpredictable. You can have a tiny tick that absolutely floors a dog and could even kill it. Then you have a big sucker on Albert that seemingly causes next to no signs. It just shows you have to be so careful. The delight the girls had in having Albert back in the family was pretty clear to see. It's obvious that Albert is important for his emotional value, but also his humour value too. Good boy, Albie. Time to go home. Let's get him home. Bye! Number four. On the Gold Coast. Hobby, mate. Good boy. While Alex continues to treat Bronx, Gerardo has another emergency. It's okay, Gerardo. It's okay, mate. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Something's seriously wrong. I could hear something wrong with her lungs. It sounds like it was gurgling sound. And I called her and she got off the bed and that's when I noticed she was falling around like a drunk. Worried owners Graham and Neva rushed the two-year-old to emergency. I can hear that grunt. You can see his breathing, so he's like, Ugh. Juniper was rushed down to us because she was missing for the last 30 hours. She moves around, she's got a mind of her own. It was a dreadful experience and we knew it was serious. Um, but a horrible one. Quick check over. Heart sounds okay. Gerardo immediately suspects tick paralysis. It's crucial he finds the deadly parasite. Just, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. Oh wow, the there is there. a small little evil thing. Paralysis ticks burrow into an animal's skin and inject toxic poison. That's in there. But finding and removing the tick is only half the battle. Juniper is already struggling to walk and has laboured breathing. We need to get the tick Amy serum in there quick before she becomes further paralysed and may not be able to breathe. It's okay. It's okay, matey. What we're going to do is give him some sedation. we got... Hey, where we go. Oh, oh, oh. He was unable to walk properly and also had laboured breathing. Gerardo wants to start Juniper on anti-serum so it can begin to neutralise the deadly toxin circulating in the young cat's body. Okay, Juniper, you can stay still for this. Wow. Oh, good job. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Good girl. One, but just then we have a rest. Yeah, we have a rest. There we go. Oh, no. rest. Let's have a rest. rest. Let's have a rest. <laughs> okay. Okay, Juniper's had enough. Time out. Time out. Feisty Juniper isn't making Gerardo's job easy. See if we can do a little bit like this. Don't look. Don't, Don't look. look. Good, Good girl. girl. So we've finished placing the IV catheter. This enables us now to administer the tick anti-serum. The tick anti-serum is what's going to bind the tick toxin in Juniper's bloodstream and eliminate it. And this is the stuff that's going to save your life. Juniper could have other ticks somewhere on her body, but Gerardo won't be able to search until she's stabilised. Fingers crossed no reactions, eh? Hello, Juniper. Oh, hello. Five hours later. We finished administering the tick anti serum to Juniper and thankfully there were no reactions. This is amazing. She's up, walking around. She's still wobbling her back legs, but this is great news. The next step is a full body clip where we look for any more ticks. And then after that, it's up to her and just time. Next time I see you, you're gonna be looking completely different. Oh, Juniper, hello. Two-year-old ragdoll Juniper was rushed in after she became paralysed and was struggling to breathe. Oh, wow. Gerardo quickly discovered the culprit, a deadly paralysis tick. The young cat has been given a dose of anti-serum and a haircut in case of more ticks. Oh, Juniper, you don't look very happy about your haircut. A new look Juniper is ready to be reunited with her anxious owners. Let's see how you're going. Oh wow, ready to rock and roll and go home. Before I take you out to mummy and daddy, I'm going to put one of these collars on, which I recommend any kitty cat wears. The collar does two things. One is it kills ticks, but the second is that it repels ticks. And that's super important because we don't want those ticks to bind at all and inject any toxin. She's super good to go home. Okay, Juniper, let's go. 
Owners Neva and Graham can't wait to see their special girl. We're just so happy that she's come through and pulled through all this. Hello, sweet George. Where's the little juniper? Where was the tickle yesterday? Yeah, see? See where the tickle yes. was? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. This week's number three. This is Boston. Yep. You say Boston? Is his name? This is Boston. On the Gold Coast, German Shepherd Boston has been rushed into the Animal Emergency Service after his owner found him on the floor, unable to walk. Hey, big man. Vets Dr Alex Hines and Dr Gerardo Poli need to urgently find out what's wrong with this distressed shepherd. Oh, the owners came man. home, or well, they were away last night, and they came back this morning and uh, found out he couldn't really walk properly. Oh, well, his breathing sounds a bit noisy too. Yeah. So just not walking properly, anything else? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I think they think it's a tick. Okay. Paralysis ticks are so deadly because they inject a poison that causes widespread paralysis, not only of the back legs, but also of the breathing muscles, and that's life-threatening. I don't know how we would ever find a tick with all this hair. Should be a prize for the person who wins, eh? Hey? Who finds the tick? Yeah. Gosh, it's hard to even get your fingers down right down to his skin. Boston is showing all the signs of a patient severely affected by tick paralysis. Every breath is laboured, he can't stand, he's in real trouble. If left untreated, tick paralysis can cause death in dogs in as little as 24 hours. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. I know, so many hands over you, mate, so many hands. This is back, lots of pats. I think I can feel something. Oh, if you found that that quick, you must have magic hands. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty big tick there as well. Ouch. Oh, it's still moving. Its legs are moving. Yeah. You're right to hold him. So I'm, I'm, let me see if I can pull it out. This might hurt a little bit because his skin looks really sore around here. Oh, God, this thing doesn't want to let go. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, mate. Good go. boy. Wow. It's amazing how something that small can have such a deadly impact. Yeah. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? He's such a big dog. But that would be enough to cause the kind of paralysis that he's showing. I think he'd benefit from some, some sedation, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's just, even to help that, that upper airway breathing. Now that we've found the tick, it's vital that we get Boston onto some oxygen because I can see that he's already suffering from breathing paralysis. And then we can start the tick anti-serum. We're still gonna have to clip all his hair off because we don't know that there's not another one there. But in the short term, he really needs the tick anti-serum because the toxin is circulating around his system at the moment. And the quicker we get the anti-serum on board, that will allow it to start neutralising the toxin. Come on through. Before starting treatment, Alex is bringing through owners Rebecca, Wade and Little Harlow to say goodbye to Boston. You couldn't go and not say goodbye, I think, and especially for my little one. I've got to give him love and stuff like that and make sure he's OK before we leave. There he is. It wouldn't be home without Boston. He makes our family whole. He's the best dog. He's just so good with our little one. She climbs all over him and he's just so patient with her and loves her. I feel like with dogs, when you look into the eyes, you can kind of see what's going on and he looks very sad, struggling. He looks sad. He's a bit sad, yeah. You cuddle and kissy, say goodbye. Okay, guys, say, so see you soon, Boston. I really want to clip Boston's hair to be sure there are no other ticks, but he's too unstable. We're going to have to leave him for tonight, and tomorrow morning, hopefully, he'll be well enough that we can do the clip. I'm really worried about him, Jodie. Four-year-old tick paralysis patient Boston has taken a turn for the worse. We've given Boston sedation, and that's helped, but his oxygen levels are dropping. I want to get the tick anti-serum on board, but at this stage, I have to get him stable. His oxygen levels are dangerously low. Come on, Mr Boston. Hey. I'm becoming concerned that we're going to have to intubate him, take control of his airway and put him on life support. It's, it's really gurgly. I just wonder if, if we even got to suction him, even in his mouth. Or... 
Hear that? Mm. He's real gurgly. We try an oxygen mask, but Boston's fighting it. It feels claustrophobic. I know we're going to need to put a nasal line in if we're going to help him with his oxygen levels. This is definitely better than him just having a mask in front of his face he doesn't tolerate. And it's much better than him breathing room air, so he needs this. Boston's oxygen levels improve and we don't have to intubate. We're going to wait to clip the rest of Boston's coat. We know there was one tick, there could be more, but at the moment the priority is to get the Tigandi serum on board. Yep. Okay, that's running. Once that's into his bloodstream, neutralising the toxin, I'm hoping we'll get him to turn the corner. You can hear that noise that he's making. Each breath is taking extra effort, and that's a real worry. If his breathing slows down, then that's where we start to need to intervene, and we may even need to take over the work of breathing for him. Oh, mate. There's not a lot more I can do for Boston right now, but I am really worried. I'm gonna be checking up through the night and I can't help thinking about that family at home who are just hoping he's gonna pull through this. It's touch and go. There we go, okay. Good boy, Boston. It's, it's quiet in here, mate. At the Animal Emergency Service on the Gold Coast, Boston's condition has worsened. The German Shepherd is battling deadly tick paralysis, and Gerardo is deeply concerned. Boston's pretty serious at the moment. So what's happened is the toxin has still had an effect, and the antiserum mops up the toxin in the bloodstream, but there's still a toxin bound to his nerves, and that's his own immune system left to get rid of that over time. So generally what happens is a little bit of a deterioration over the next sort of six or 12 hours, and he's kind of deteriorated quite rapidly. Boston has been transferred to the intensive care unit as his condition is now critical. The nursing care is more intensive, so hopefully that's enough to keep him stable, keep him comfortable, so we don't have to progress his care into mechanical life support. Oh, Boston. German Shepherd Boston's condition has continued to deteriorate. You're really paralyzed now. What happened? It all just went downhill. Your family is going to be so worried about you. We knew that this could happen, Boston Hay, but I was really hoping it wouldn't. But you definitely are worse than yesterday. Alex fears the poison from a deadly paralysis tick may have done too much damage before the antivenom could take effect. He's now got two oxygen lines in. He's definitely still putting a lot of effort into breathing. We're worried about what we can hear on his chest sounds and we think he might have aspirated, so we think he's developed pneumonia. So we're going to want to take some chest x-rays and then we'll know how bad this is. Good boy. In we go, Boston. Good boy. It's OK. OK, thanks, Ella. We're ready. All right. Boston's x-ray, it doesn't look very good at all. What I'm seeing is almost complete consolidation of the lung. This is pneumonia on a massive scale. This has added a whole level of complexity to Boston's condition. It means that not only is he dealing with the tick paralysis, but he's got a severe pneumonia. That, and this could be the part that's life-threatening now. Yeah, sorry, mate. You're going to lose all of that beautiful hair. Ross, buddy. <sighs> the decision is made for vet Elise and vet nurse Natalie to go ahead with clipping his fur in search of further ticks. Poor Boston. He's now got paralysis and pneumonia. We've started antibiotics for the pneumonia, but the next step is to clip this hair off. We've got to make sure there's no more ticks. I'm amazed that they found the first tick under all this hair. Boston is now at the stage where he's completely paralysed in his body. He can lift his head, look around a little bit, but that's about all he can do. What that means is we have to help him with all these bodily functions. He can't even go to the toilet on his own. So we're gonna to need to put a urinary catheter in. We have to put cream in his eyes because his blinking is affected. All these things become paralyzed as part of the condition. I'm worried there could be another tick there. 10% of patients have a second tick. And if he has a second tick somewhere hiding in this big furry coat, then it will kill him. Boston's owners, Beck and Wade, have come for a visit, desperate to see their sick boy but a decision has been made to keep them at a distance. 
It's extremely hard um, for owners not to be able to come in and visit when they have tick paralysis, but um, we have seen um, animals before, like Boston, that are just coping okay on their own, that when they see their owners, they get so excited and their bodies just can't cope with that extra bit of stress. So, yeah, you know, you always think they're going to be so much better coming in and seeing you, um, but actually in this case, it can be really dangerous for them. I'm just getting all these hair off all the same. Yeah. It looks so sad, yeah. So we were obviously just hoping to go see him and just give him a cuddle, make sure that he was doing okay and to reassure that we're still here and, you know, hoping for the best for him sort of thing. And I don't know, didn't know really what to expect. We got a, um, lots of phone calls last night, which was really good. Just kept us, you know, in the lurk and know what was going on. So, um, yeah, we just wanted to see an improvement. So what sort of journey do you think he's going to be on? The pneumonia, to be honest, has set him back a little bit. OK. Yeah. Because it's just given him another thing to fight. Okay. So it really is a matter of just watch and wait a little bit. There's only so much we can do for him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and a lot of it's, it's going to be up to Boston to fight this. I feel very nervous, constantly just anxious, because we just don't know what's going to happen, because um, obviously he's got pneumonia as well. So he's got an extra thing he needs to fight and get through. So um, Boston's not out of the woods. It's sort of touch and go. The clip is over. It was a marathon effort, but well worth it. And we're done. Good, Good boy. boy. No more hair for you. And we didn't find a second tick? No, we no. didn't find any additional ticks. OK. I feel much better now the hair's off. We know for sure it's just that one tick that was causing the problem. So I think. At this stage, we've really done everything we can for him. He's had his clip, he's had his Tigani serum. It's really up to Boston now to fight this and get better and get home. Yeah. Hey, Boston. How are you doing this morning? Are you still on your oxygen by the look of it? Boston is still in intensive care and Alex can't relax just yet. It's been two days since Boston came into intensive care. It's good to see that the paralysis is wearing off but the pneumonia, it still has him in the danger zone. That breathing sound still sounds a bit rough, hey, mate? Hey? You just look tired. Where are you going with your walking? I just wonder if we might give you a little bit of a trial around and see if you can get up and about. He's blinking, and he wasn't able to blink when he first came through into the ICU. So those things, as they improve, they tell us that it's less the paralysis that's holding him back at the moment and more the pneumonia. Are you going to show me what you can do? You can come for a little walk. Come on. Good boy. That was really good. Hey? Take it slow. Oh, you're off. That's great. Good job, Boston. Yeah, there's not much of you under there. Now you've got no fur. Oh, oh no, no, don't go check out the other patients. If you're walking that well, you might even be up for some food pretty soon. It may not seem like a good thing to see a dog wee inside, but this is really good for Boston. It's an important step in the recovery of tick paralysis because it really shows us that the paralysis is starting to wear off and he's able to resume those normal bodily functions on his own. So good on Boston for having a wee. Is that your bit of exercise for today? Do you want to hop back into bed? I think you'd be better off in bed. Good boy. Can you sit down? Oh, yeah. get you connected to your oxygen again. I can't even think about Boston going home until he's off the oxygen and breathing on his own. Right now, he's a long way from that. You're feeling much better now, aren't you, Boston? Hey, you're such a good boy. Hey, you want to go home today? That'll be pretty exciting. You're going to see your family again. Good boy, yeah. It's been five days since German Shepherd Boston was bitten by a deadly paralysis tick and left fighting for life. After a week in intensive care, he's finally on the mend. Hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, really well. Um, he is doing fantastic. So what's the verdict? Is he, do you think he's good enough to go home? Yeah, I think he's ready to come home. He is off oxygen, um, he's had some dinner and he's up and walking around. That's so good. Hey, Boston. Hey. Are you a good boy? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I am so thrilled that Boston is going home today. There were moments where I wasn't sure if he was going to survive, and just being able to take him out to his family, this is going to be incredible. Hello. Hello. Hi. 
does he look a bit hey. different? Yeah, he looks a lot different. He's so different. Buddy. Oh boy. Hey buddy. Hey. Hey, yeah, buddy. what do you think, Harlow? Did you still know it was Boston? Do you know it's Boston? Yeah. Hello, boy. Oh, that's honestly, that's the happiest he's that he still looks a bit unsure. He was like, oh, no. Hey, boy. There's a boy. Okay. He looks so different. But oh, he's still our baby. Yeah. yeah. It can be really tough as an emergency vet. It's long hours, it's tough work, there's big decisions to be made. But seeing patients like Boston go home today, it's so worthwhile. This is why we do it. Can you be a good boy? Are you going to take him out? Yeah, he's not going to oh, be not a... that way. <laughs> hey, Boston, come on. Let's go, boy. Yeah. Yeah, hold on tight. Number two. Shira, come on. You're doing all right. At Scott's Come Richmond on. Clinic, Shira, new patient Shearer has arrived with his owner. Come on. Good boy. Hi, son. Hello. <laughs> how are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? Bethany and her 13-year-old yeah. Collie are That's good friends with Nurse Sam. You're very nervous, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Don't like coming to see vets. No, he doesn't like it. He's not a happy boy. Poor little lad. So Shearer is a lovely boy, but he is a collie. So collies have some quite specific breed traits where they can be a little bit um, suspicious. Oh, he's really scared. Which has made it very difficult when we come to the vets because he gets very nervous. And as soon as things get a bit serious, that's when he starts to get a little bit snappy. Come on, You're going to be all right. Come on. This he's way. not so sure. No. <laughs> Bless him. The 13-year-old Collie is extremely anxious around vets, so it's been a long time between checkups. Bethany is hoping Scott will be able to win over the nervous old dog. Hello, Bethany. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Oh, that's good. I've heard lots about you, but possibly a little bit more about your chap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's all right. Well, we'll do the pleasantries in the consult room, shall we? Okay, cool. Come, Come on, on through. Shira, this way. I know that Scott would be sensitive to Shearer's anxiety, and he won't mind potentially getting bitten. This is what he does most, he just kind of hangs out at the door. <laughs> you can smell freedom, can't you? Is that the escape route, my boy? Yeah. He's not a massive fan of the vets. Don't take it personally. Okay. <laughs> Sam's given me some history on Shira, and he has just had some unfortunate incidents at vet practices. So hopefully a new environment, a new vet, he might be a different dog. That's good. Now I'm just going to do my usual thing of not really looking at him in the eye because yeah. that's always a bit threatening yeah. and just sort of be quite dismissive and submissive and just see what he does. Hello. He's okay. just one of them collies where the signs are very subtle. Yes. His ears go back and his eyes go wide and yeah. then that's, that's him saying. And it can just be a, just a, like, I'm fine, not fine. Just yeah, very he, doesn't, he doesn't give so, much warning. He no. won't growl. He will just snap. Okay, my heart rate's rising just having this conversation. <laughs> so beyond yeah. his little snapping issue, what else is concerning you? So he's got a lot of lumps and bumps all over his body, but then there's one hard lump that's come up on his shoulder blade that I'm a little concerned about. Check his teeth. He's also not microchipped. He's not or vaccinated. Right. Well, we definitely need to microchip him. Yeah. Um, now the law is in, we need yeah. to make sure that's done. And vaccinations are always important. So, wow. Full service, please. Yeah. So what's probably best is that we go downstairs together, you pop the muzzle on, then you say your goodbyes, and then we get going. Okay. Yeah? Brilliant. Come on then. Come on then, mate. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, he's very keen for that door, isn't he? Yeah, bless him. <laughs> Escape. Hooray. So there's another one. <laughs> So far, Shira has been beautifully behaved, but you can tell that he's quite nervous and that makes him unpredictable. So sadly, we still need to muzzle him in order to put him under anaesthetic and fully assess Bethany's long list of concerns. All right. That'll be fun. It's like leaving your baby. Auntie Sam will look after you. Knowing that they want someone that they know around them and, and there's just lots of unknown people and they're sticking needles in him. All right, Bye. Bethany. Okay. See you later. See ya. Bye. I know, I know. It's really tough. And just hoping that everything will be all right. We're not all bad, no, no, no. 
In order to get Shira anesthetized, we first need to sedate him, but he's a nervous boy and so not going to take this lying down. So we need to use a technique similar to the one we use in larger animals, the door technique. I know, Matt, I think you have an awareness of what we're about to do, don't you? We feed the lead through the gap in the door so we can squeeze in with the door and the wall and it produces a race, which is what we use in horses, for example, to keep them still and protect the people that are working with them. Okay, Nathan, right? you ready? Let's just hope that this nice, genial chap will take it well. Good boy. Good boy. It's all right. Good okay. boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Sure, it's all right. Good right. Well done. Good boy. Well done, mate. Good you got it. Good boy. Yeah. Good, boy. Good, boy. Good, boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, dear. Horrible people. Okay. Yeah, we'll let him back out again. Oh, what awful people we are. Hey? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That door. Hey? I blame the door, don't you? See, look, he likes me because he's too horrible. <laughs> Shira is not a bad boy. He's simply afraid. But a fearful dog is an unpredictable dog, and so sadly we just can't take any chances. Phase two. Ready? No one's there. We're ready. Oh, he's a good boy. That's it. That's a great shot, Sam. Well done. Once the sedation starts to kick in, we place a second muzzle over Shira's eyes, which helps to keep him calm, and that allows us to place the catheter and finally get him anesthetized. Can you just come and turn in a sitter on for me, Sam? Okay, so. Good boy. Big, deep, calm breaths. It's alright. Okay, good boy. Now that Shira is finally under, we have to work quickly, and that's why I've got both Sam and Nathan helping me today. Bethany's given us a really long list of concerns to get through, and at 13 years old, Shira's an old boy, so we don't want to keep him under any longer than we have to. Now, let's have a little feel of where that lump was. If we all just have a good feel of him, just from head to toe, and feel anything that you're concerned about. Ah, there it is. Can I actually pass me those clippers in front of you, Nathan, please? Yeah, having a little feel of this, it's a clearly defined lump within the skin itself. It feels a little bit fluid filled. So I think that this might just be a dermoid cyst, so something that's a benign growth in the skin. I'm just going to pop a needle in it real quick. And I'll just have a look under a microscope. Okay, everything I can see here is just normal tissue. So I think in this case, Shira's an old boy, he's developed normal lumps and bumps that older animals do, but it's certainly nothing to worry about, so we don't need to remove it. But Sam's found something that does need to be removed. There's not a lump, but that is a big tick. It's quite juicy. Massive. Ooh. Oh, nasty blighter. OK, well, not bad news, because we can just take that off. So let's remove that tick, please, Sam. Yep. Good news keeps on coming. Ticks are nasty little creatures that suck blood, but they can also carry some really nasty diseases. In the UK, they can spread something called Lyme's disease, which people can also get. In the larger European continent, they can spread tick fever, and in Australia, they're known to cause paralysis. Wow. <laughs> That's terrible. Massive. It is massive. Oh, he's a big boy and he's still moving. It means you've got the head out, so well done, Sam. <laughs> The best way to prevent ticks is by using either a topical liquid applied in between the shoulder blades of your dog, or there are some oral medications that you can use as well. These things either kill the tick before it can bite, or if it does bite, it kills it before it can transmit those nasty diseases. Scott now wants to check on the condition of the 13-year-old's teeth. You know, really very good teeth for a dog of his age, and I feel like I've gone boldly when no one has gone before which is inside the mouth of uh, the savage beast. He's not really, he's a pussycat. Vaccinations are very important, but it's a shame with Shira that this first has to be done under an aesthetic. All right, so last but not least, we'll just do the microchip and then we can wake this boy up. He's all legal now. He is, he's all legal. Hey, good boy. Right, that's it. Right, let's wake this boy up. I think we're good friends now. Mm. Oi. 
I say to him whilst he's fast asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not very often that you get a dog as old as Shearer come in with as many concerns as he had and yet get to send him home with a clean bill of health. Good boy. Now sleepy times for the old man, eh? Hopefully we've shown him that there's really nothing too much to worry about. I'm even hoping that I might have made a new friend. Good boy. You have a snooze, I'll call mummy. Good lad. Hello, champ. It's time to go home now, hey? Scott's patient, Shira, is ready to go home. You can take that off, because I trust you. Yes, I do. There we go. Always a good boy, see? There we go. Should we go home and see mummy? Yeah, come on then. Upstairs, Shira's owner, Bethany, can't wait to be reunited with her boy. I thought I was going to be all right, and then as soon as I left him, I started fearing the worst. It was horrible. I didn't want to leave him. Where's mummy? Where's mummy? Go get her. Where's she? Puppy? Who the fuck is this? Puppy! I'm so sorry. Oh, he's a good boy. Are you sleepy? Oh, you go, Oh, how are you doing? Oh, puppy. So, I'm very glad to see you guys together, and he uh, has been such an angel. He's been a, a joy, really, haven't you, mate? You've been a good boy. Joy. But the good news is even better, because not only has he been a gentleman, <laughs> but... Uh, all the concerns that you had, uh -huh. they're not concerns. Oh, that's brilliant. So the lump here is just a normal old cyst that's present in his skin. Okay. And that's absolutely fine. No need to remove it. Yes, he's an old boy. He's got a few old dog problems, but that's all they are. That's good. Well, at least we've come and got him, yeah, got him all checked, checked out. Yeah, checked over. But yeah, symptoms of old age, but not of disease. Oh, yay, good boy. I'm so happy that he's got basically a clean bill of health. Now I hope that you'll come and do some social visits. It'd absolutely. be nice to see him and not have to do anything mean to him. Absolutely. Hey, buddy. And Scott was absolutely brilliant with him. And now we can go home for dinner. <laughs> Say thank you, Scott. Bye, champ. Hey, Take thank care. You so much. See you later. Nice to meet you. Bye, you too. Bye. Good boy. Come on, puppy. And this week's number one. Hi Chris, how are you? Good, how are you? Tim will be happy to see you come straight through. He's got a platypus. He does, it was found this morning, it's unbelievable. Really? Hi mate. Hey, Tim, how are you buddy? Yeah, good thank you. Did you know it ceased to surprise me? <laughs> no, check this out. The malnourished platypus was found wandering lost well. on a suburban road. He's lucky they didn't run him over thinking he was a rat, you know, good people. We, we, we get some lovely people that bring all sorts of animals in, so this guy's benefited from it. Have you got a name for him? Oh, look, well, between a few of us, we wanted to call him Aussie because he's a little battler at the moment. My guess is that he's a young male. He's been kicked out by a territorial male and he's just trodged through the bush. He's picked up all these ticks and he turns up in suburbia. There's 20, 30 right there. My worry is that he's got 40 or so ticks in that container. He's probably got another at least 40 on him there. Yeah. If each of those has, say, half a mil yeah. of blood, even a quarter of a mil, that's 10 mils of blood. Yeah. He's got to be severely anemic as it is. Yeah. Uh, underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him. What am I do just to, I guess, as a bit of insurance against him going into shock himself and, and not really handling this whole experience, actually give him some fluids now? That should help his blood pressure straight away. Has he tried to use his spurs yet? No, I mean, I don't know, they're still there. Yeah. And um, they're quite large still for a young plat, but... Jeez, they are decent, aren't they? As the minutes tick by, he's becoming more and more stressed by the whole situation, so we've got to get the ticks off quickly, but pay a lot of attention to that spur. I and most of the guys here would rather cop a whack from a King Brown yeah. than one of these, you know. The pain is just said to be unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Everyone just assumes they're just so yeah. cute and cuddly. Yeah. And they're cute, but they've got a pretty nasty little yeah. surprise waiting for you, haven't they? Chris continues the painstaking job of removing all the ticks from Aussie. It's only when you really part the fur, you realise just how many there are. It's like having open wounds all over his body. The fact is, he can quite easily die from these ticks, because each one of them is taking just a little bit of blood, and that could be enough to kill him. Oh, jeez. 
it's important to realise that these aren't paralysis ticks. There is more than one type of tick, and these are actually called bush ticks. So what they do is they just suck blood. On a small animal, finding one or two ticks is a concern. Finding a hundred is extraordinary, and extraordinarily worrying too. After a thorough examination of Aussie, Chris is satisfied he's removed all the ticks from the orphaned platypus. A preventative spray should now stop any other ticks ravaging his fragile system. Listen to that. They don't very often make a noise. No. That's almost the emergency beacon for them. They, they make that sound when they're really stressed. His natural environment is water. He's going to eat when he's in water, so the sooner we can get him there and get him relaxing, the better. All right, now he doesn't look real good there, so I want to get him in nice and quick. Good. I'm just going to ease him down a bit. Okay. Off you go, mate. Let him see where he is. We'll just keep him isolated for the moment, you know, give him his own little tank and um, let him try and recuperate until he gets healthy. Looks good. He's hungry, isn't he? Yeah, actually eating mealworms. Look at that. A little sonar of his is, is still working then. Look, there we go, another one. That's a good food response. I mean, that's immediate. It's not over by a long way. You know, for him to be like that in my hands, then touch the water, it doesn't mean we're in the clear, you know. That's sort of his last ditched attempt to get some nutrition in, you know, but we, we've got a long way to go. You know, a lot of it's up to him. All we can provide is food, shelter, water, um, you know, we can put all the elements there. He's got to have a good will to live. And here he is, our little Aussie battler. He's beaten all the odds. He had 80 blood-sucking ticks on him. He was on the road and avoided getting hit by a car. He walked all that way through the bush. And I tell you, if this bloke was human, he'd be selling his story to a magazine. Aussie, the great survivor, has made a full recovery and is adapting well to his new home at the Australian Reptile Park. Now, as for his future, in captivity, he's going to become very dependent upon us. So, he might finish his days in a breeding program as an ambassador for his species. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way.